Welcome back guys and what we're going to be looking at in our tutorial today is another new formula for called the perpendicular distance formula from a line. Okay, So if we have a line and a point that is perpendicular from it, we can find this perpendicular distance using the equation of a line and the coordinates of the point. Our formula for the perpendicular distance is the modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared where a is the coefficient of x in our equation of the line, b is the coefficient of y in the equation of the line, and c is the constant. x1 and y1 are our two coordinates. And we can see that this formula for the perpendicular equation of the line is on top of page 19 in our log tables. So we've moved on from all the formula we've used on page 18, though we're going to continue to use them, and we're now looking at our new formula on the top of page 19. And it specifically says here, the distance from x1, y1 to the line ax plus by plus c equals zero. So we're going to spend two tutorials on this formula, guys, and looking through example one first. So here it says, find the perpendicular distance from the point 1 minus 4 to the line 3x minus y minus 2 is equal to zero. So as soon as I see those words perpendicular distance, the first thing I'm writing out is my formula ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And now I need to figure out what I need to substitute in. So I know my 1 minus 4 here is going to be my x1, y1 in my formula. a is going to be the coefficient of x, so a is going to be 3. b is going to be the coefficient of y, so it's going to be minus 1. And c is going to be our constant, so it's going to be minus 2. Now don't forget guys, particularly with these minuses, the modulus sign here means that our distance should always be a positive. So we need to ensure that whatever number is inside our modulus sign here is always going to be a positive. So now we're going to substitute in what we know. We have 3 by x1, which is 1, minus 1 by y1, which is minus 4, plus c, which is actually minus 2, all over the square root of a squared plus b squared, so 3 squared plus minus 1 to be squared. So now we have here, 3 by 1 is going to give me 3, plus 4, minus 2, all over the square root of 9 plus 1. Okay, because 3 squared is 9 and minus 1 squared is 1. Which means now, guys, we have 3 plus 4, which is 7, minus 2 is 5. So we have 5 over the square root of 10, which we're going to put into our calculator now to get our answer in its simplest form. So we put in 5 over the square root of 10, which gives me 10 over root 2, or root 10 over 2, sorry, which to two decimal places is 1.58 units as our distance here. Okay? So take a minute here, go back through that example, make sure we understand everything that we've done in this example one, part one, and then we're gonna look at example one, part two. So pause the video here and add in any notes we need to into our notes. Now, looking at example one, part two. It says find the distance between the parallel lines 3x minus 4y plus 12 and 3x minus 4y minus one equals zero. Well, I can see in this sum, guys, that these two lines are parallel because the x coefficient and the y coefficient are the same, which means the slope of each of these lines is four over th or 3 over 4, so we know they're parallel. Now, what we know about parallel lines is that they run parallel to each other like this and that they're never going to meet. So if I say that this is my first parallel line, 3x minus 4y plus 12 is equal to 0. And this is my second, 3x minus 4y minus 1 is equal to 0. The perpendicular distance between these two lines at any point is going to be the same because they're parallel. So all I need to do is find a point on one of the lines to be able to find the perpendicular distance between them. So it doesn't matter which line I'm going to use, guys. So I'm just going to use the top line here. And the easiest point to find is where it goes across either the x-axis or the y-axis. So again here, I'm just going to find where it goes across the x-axis. We could have used the y-axis, it makes no odds. 
and where it goes across the x-axis to find this we're going to let y equal to zero so again I'm going to use this top line here okay so I have 3x minus 4y minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so instead of y here, I'm going to sub in 0. So we have 3x minus 4 by 0 minus 1 is equal to 0. So this guy is gone. I get 3x, bring my 1 over, is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 3, so x is equal to 1 over 3. Which means one of the coordinates that is on that top line is going to be 1 over 3 and 0. So this guy up here, we're going to say, is 1 over 3 and 0. And that's the coordinate now we're going to use as our x1, y1. So if I'm using 1 over 3 and 0 as our x1, y1, that means I have to use the opposite line as our a, b, and c. So we're going to have 3x minus 4y plus 12 is equal to 0. So that means in this sum now, guys, I'm going to use x1, y1. Sorry. We're going to use x1, y1. We're going to have a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 4, and c is equal to 12. And now I'm going to use my perpendicular distance formula, which is ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And now I'm going to sub those in, making sure that we're using the line opposite. So we have 3 by a third minus 4 by 0 uh, plus 12 all over the square root of 3 to be squared plus minus 4 to be squared. So we have 3 by a third which just gives me 1 minus 4 by 0 is gone plus 12 all over the square root of 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16. So we have 13 over the square root of 25, which is just 5. And now I'm going to put that into my calculator to get it in its simplest form. So 13 over 5 gives me 2.6 units. Is the perpendicular distance between those two lines. But to clarify again, guys, I could have used either line to find the point. I could have found either the point that goes across the x or the y axis. That was a choice. Once I find the point, I have to make sure that I use whatever point the line is not on as the opposite side. And after that, it's just using a new formula. So take a minute, guys. Make sure we add this into our notes. And then in the next tutorial, we're going to go further into using this formula. Thanks, guys. Bye now.